Yes, uh, my name is uh, Raju Parnichatri and I come from Nepal. I'm the member of the Climate Change Council in Nepal. Yes, well, uh, Nepal is, uh, is one of the most uh, vulnerable countries to the impacts of climate change. We have high Himalayas, we have high hills, you know, and then we have plains. So the geography of Nepal, though it is a very small country, is very, um, uh, you know, I would say, in the, the geography leads to a very vulnerable, uh, high vulnerability of the country in the sense that there are uh, glaciers melting in the Himalayas, there are lots of landslides happening in the hills, so there are lots of floods taking place on the, on the plains. So in, 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 in the geography of the country itself uh, makes Nepal uh, very hi highly uh, vulnerable. The, the ma uh, mountains are very, uh, very fragile and uh, uh, it's, it's lot, uh, is covered by the snow in the, in the high Himalayas. And both there are very scattered and very low population but we highly rely on the uh, water that flows from the Himalayas on the downstream uh, f uh, from the rivers uh, you know, uh, for our agriculture, for drinking purposes, to, to produce electricity and then so on and so forth. So uh, the, uh, with, the, the, with the growing impacts of climate change, the glaciers are retreating at a faster rate. That's what the science tells us. It's just not the science, also the people living there have, um, uh, have been observing these impacts. So the impacts of climate change this grows uh, in, the, in the country, especially in the, in the mountainous regions. Uh, in the long term, it is likely that Nepal will be impacted quite a lot because, as I said, the resources of the water resources there are, will be declining in the future if, 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 if it goes in the way now uh, the uh, climate impacts are happening in the country. Yes, uh, well, I w in terms of uh, plants and, and uh, you know, uh, the... Uh, tree lines moving uh, upwards. There's been very limited uh, uh, scientific studies on, on those uh, on those parts, but definitely there are the limited studies that have been uh, been done in the country. Definitely show that the there is a changing vegetation in the countries, and the tree lines are moving further up because due to the uh, due to the impacts of climate change, there are new vegetations growing in a, in, a, in places where they are never seen before. There are invasive species that's also coming to places where they have never seen before. So in, in terms of plants, you know, the flora and fauna, there are lots of changes happening. Mm -hmm. But to really get into the in-depth knowledge about what really uh, those uh, specific impacts would be, I think uh, we, we, we still are, are doing lots of uh, scientific studies and more needs to be done in the future. Yes, well, the, especially the mountaineers who climb Everest or go uh, uh, climb different mountains in the, in, the, uh, in the Himalayas have always come back to tell us that, you know, the, the, the stability in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the snow uh, cover is, uh, or the, uh, the, in the snow covers in the mountains are, are getting less. So it means that they have also, uh, 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 they also share about the experience of how the new glacier lakes have been forming in the Himalayas uh, because these glaci uh, some of the glacier lakes that used to exist in the past are growing larger in size so it means that there is a risk of these glaciers uh, glacier, glacier lake outbursting so recently in the last uh, few years Nepal um, uh, tried to work uh, with two uh, glacier lakes called Imza Lake and Chorolpa Lake so what the intervention was basically to reduce the, uh, the size of the lake so that the impacts, they would not be the outburst of the lakes to reduce that. If, if, if any of these lakes outburst, then the lives and livelihood of the people living on the downstream would be very dangerous. So the, what country is trying to do is reduce the, uh, the risk of glacier lakes being out, outburst so that to, live, uh, to, uh, to protect the lives and livelihood of the communities living on the downstream of those lakes. Yes, well, Nepal is a um, agriculture-based country. Our major, uh, the, the almost 75% uh, 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 of the people rely on agriculture, and almost more than 35% um, you know, of the GDP contribution comes from the agriculture sector. It means that it is one of the major sectors for us, and as a as a poor and uh, vulnerable country, I think food security is one of the very important and key issue for Nepal. Already what we have seen is our agriculture uh, relies on the uh, 
uh, rain-fed uh, aspect. So we, the, our farmers are relying on the rain that, is, that comes down so that you know, they, can, they can do their agriculture. But lately, there has been a lot of distortion in the way the monsoon, for instance, is, is, is uh, coming to Nepal. Or there has been a lot of rain, or a lot of flooding, or a lot, uh, even there's a, a long uh, period of dryness in the country. So this, uh, this I think, is, is, a, is, a, is a one of the very, very important aspects for us. But then I think there are lots of impacts being seen. And agriculture leads to uh, you know, uh, the food security of the country. So I think this is a very important aspect that we need to. And Nepal being a vulnerable country, we are very sensitive to food security and, and, and population relying on ag agriculture. Well, at the, at the moment, country is really trying to uh, integrate uh, the impact i mean uh, addressing clim uh, climate change impacts into agriculture sector the government is coming out with policies and programs and also projects to really help the farmers learn about the impacts of climate change and the actions that they can take uh, in terms of how they can adjust to the changing climatic conditions for the agriculture practices but of course as i said there are limited resources and technologies in the country so unless that we also get or uh, receive supports from uh, from the experts or, or the countries that have the capacity to do so, I think we, uh, Nepal will be struggling quite a, uh, quite a bit. But then, yes, there's already a very uh, lot of um, what do you call this uh, uh, sensitivity in terms of uh, trying to do something towards uh, being uh, adopting more resilient agriculture. But then we have a long way to go. I, I would say. Well, for, uh, for Nepal, uh, one of the things, as I said earlier, is how to manage the uh, glacier lakes that are forming in the, in the mountains. Well, that is one of the, one of the major parts. But, but apart from that, what we're trying to do is also there are lots of landslides taking places in the, in the hilly regions. You know, there's unexpected landslides taking places. Or there's a lot of flooding and flash floods, uh, uh, flash floods that is taking place in the, in the, uh, in the plains of Nepal, which is which is also our food grain or the food basket for the country. So there's a lot of this unpredictable floods, landslides, um, and then uh, you know the rivers being flooded, and these are big. They are increasing at the moment. So and also in a very unpredictable manner. So I think country trying to cope with those impacts is, is significantly increasing. But of course, uh, the, the resources are limited to the country to manage all these uh, problems. Well, um, climate finance is uh, one of the major issues at these uh, negotiations. And uh, two years back, when the, uh, when the UNFCCC parties um, agreed in the, uh, the Paris Agreement, where well, climate finance was also incorporated or embedded as one of the major components. And climate finance is something that has been agreed to support the developing countries address the impacts of climate change because these impacts have been new to these developing countries. While developing countries, especially the least developed countries, are already suffering from poverty, underdevelopmentness, uh, uh, and aspects like these, the impacts of climate change have been additional to these countries, are a burden to these countries. So it is the responsibility of the uh, developed countries or those that have the resources to support developing countries like LDCs to address impacts of climate change, whether it is to uh, address the food security issue, whether it is to address uh, flooding or landslides, anything to do with the impacts of climate change. So that support primarily is it's supposed to go to these countries so that they can not uh, address these impacts of climate change at the same time uh, develop uh, or, or you know achieve development in the country, sustainable development in the countries. Well, I come from Nepal, so I'm I'm the part of the Nepal, uh, Nepalese uh, Nepali delegation here. And for us, uh, as a as a, uh, a LDC uh, country and a vulnerable country, uh, our our ask would be that. You know, there's, there's definitely the, the support going to come to, uh, to a country like Nepal. But then what is more important is just not about providing support, but the, um, providing the support with, with ease so that a country like mine can access the money that is coming to us in, uh, easily in a very simplified process. And as far as possible, directly meeting the needs of my country 
uh, the people and the com vulnerable communities that the that the climate change impacts have been uh, being faced by uh, by uh, by uh, Nepal. So that will be a very key and important aspect for us. This uh, meeting is a very technical meeting, so it won't uh, focus much on the real decisions and the outcomes. More more about understanding each other trying to agree uh, you know uh, the, the the rule book that will be implement uh, that will be that will be agreed to implement the paris agreement those technicalities will be understood by parties by north south uh, the, the developed and developing countries or different groups that are here it's more about understanding these issues so that we can build on these issues to take decisions in the upcoming COP.